Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Alejandro Jimenez. Uh, I am here today presenting my Marie Curie project. This is called Digital Twin Anomaly Detection, Decision Making for Bridge Management. The acronym is DTAT. I'm also doing this in behalf of my supervisor, Professor Valerie Clevis, and Professor Maria Novara from TU Delta. <coughs> well, some key facts about my project is that uh, it will last for two years, from the 1st of November, 2022, so this month, until 31st of October in 2024. Uh, it was funded under the Marie Curie Actions Program by the European Union, and it received a contribution of 227,000 euros, more or less. Uh, it will also entail a secondment at TU Delft, the last uh, six, six months of the project. I will go to the Netherlands to work there with the other professor. Professor, I am Maria Nuga. And uh, the relevant knowledge actors and users of these projects are the Statensbeck Beck Vesen and the uh, Ritzmatz Stat, which are the bridge management uh, stakeholders of Norway and the Netherlands, respectively. <coughs> so the context of the project is based on the fact that the bridges are a key factor of uh, the European transportation network, they're also very important at, at a global level. Uh, they have huge uh, economic, social, and also cultural value. Uh, unfortunately, many of them are now in poor conditions. This is basically due to the fact that many bridges were built in Europe after World War II, and they were designed with a lifespan of 50 or 100 years. So uh, now, at this time, we can now start to see damage on them in poor condition. This has been uh, recently evidenced by the collapse of some famous bridges, starting by the Morandi Bridge in Genoa in Italy. Uh, there has also been another collapse, Viaducto de Castro in Spain. And most recently here in Norway also, the Tretten Bridge in the south of Norway. So, <coughs> This is the picture of the bridge. It was built, and it was supposed to last for 100 years. I think only after 10 years it was it collapsed. So even after some bridges have been recently inspected, and no damage has been found of them, at some point something happened, and the bridge unfortunately gets damaged, or sometimes they even collapse. So what we are proposing in this uh, project is that since available human and economic resources are not enough to maintain and repair and replace all bridges in Europe at the same time, uh, improvements on the current bridge management and, uh, and the operation system are urgently needed. So we are proposing this multidisciplinary project in which we will combine the knowledge, know-how from bridge and structural engineering and apply the new methodolo methodologies such as the digital twins, anomaly detection algorithms, reliability-based bridge management approaches, and cultural heritage conservation. So it's a multidisciplinary project taking pieces of parts from all these fields and methodologies in order to improve the sustainability and the lifespan of the existing bridges in Europe. In Europe. So this uh, project basically has two main research object objectives. Um, the first one consists on the creation of digital twin models uh, of heritage and conventional bridges, both of them, where damage decaying scenarios could be simulated. And we will generate a database based on these simulations, which will be further used in the implementation of anomaly detection algorithms. And we will assess different types of algorithms and we will determine which one is the most efficient and precise in order to detect damage or decay in bridges. So once this objective have, has been achieved, we will move forward and we will try to develop an anomaly detection algorithm inform open, open source decision-making tool based on reliability of bridges. So <coughs> this uh, developed tool will basically take into account the cultural heritage value of the existing bridges. And uh, hopefully it will uh, improve the conservation part and also the sustainability of the system. Bridges network in Europe. Uh, in order to achieve this uh, objective, it's very important that we get involved the end users of the project. 
which are Staten Beckens and the other agency in the Netherlands. So we are planning to conduct a series of workshops of co-design, co-creation and co-assessment of the project. So working together with these people in the public sector, we are trying to achieve our main, main goals. There is also another very important objective, which is, the, is to help the experienced researcher, in this case, I am the experienced researcher, uh, to become a leading international expert on the conservation of bridges and also to achieve my personal and professional goal, which is to become an independent researcher and an assistant professor at a top university. So in order to achieve this goal, we, we have uh, developed, in collaboration with my two supervisors, a very detailed career development plan in which all the training, teaching, supervising, and publication activities have been defined so that I can improve my CV, fill all the gaps that I have there, uh, and be better prepared in the future to, to get a position and also to obtain for, for the funding from projects. <coughs> As part of this uh, project, a very important activity is the communication and dissemination. Since this project has been funded with the tax taxpayers' money, uh, we need to communicate with the public at large and uh, let people know what we are actually doing. So for those purposes, I have created a, a website of the project and also profiles in all main social media platforms, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. So the purpose of doing this is to communicate and disseminate the process and the progress of the project. Every, every activity that we do, we will be trying to communicate with the public at large so that people know how their money is being spent by the European community. And another very important aspect is the open science uh, principles that, are, that have now been adopted by the European Union and that are required in all these uh, European funded projects. So I have also created a profile of the project in the OSF, uh, which is the Open Science Framework website, where, for example, preprints, uh, data management plans, uh, protocols, etc., of the activities that I performed during the project will be also posted and updated. So people can have free access to all the data, the models, and the information that is generated. So these are the links to the website and all the social media. Please uh, like, share, and uh, subscribe. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your attention. That's all.